What's up guys? Welcome back to another video. I hope you're all doing well today. Uh, the day is the 17th of December today and I have a nice early track video for you again. So today we are going to be covering Motoland which is a private test facility created by Bake Mind Tours. This is his most recent work. It's not 100% complete just yet. He has informed me that he's working on some finishing touches here. However, I'll give you the uh, little rundown of what we got. So there's four track layouts in total. We have got the Supercross track over in the background over here, which the orange dirt is one layout, and alternatively the grey dirt is a second layout. So you can see if I zoom in right here, you can split off and either go to the left for the orange or right for the grey. Uh, we have got two Nationals tracks as well. One of them is meant to be more of like a professional type track, like a little bit rougher, the ruts are a bit more difficult, which I believe is that one over there. And then we've also got one over here, which is more amateurish, you know, a bit more beginner friendly. Now. I'm going to be riding the Fantic 252 stroke today. Uh, I rode it last night on stream as part of the US Open Supercross series. And if you haven't watched that stream, by the way, please do go through and like flick back through the races. I really feel like I outdid myself. I was so happy with how I played, especially going up against some of the 450s. Um, but I'm riding it again today, not only because I enjoyed it, but because some of these ruts that I see on these tracks and berms, I've... I feel like we're going to get some two-stroke singing action in this video. I'm really, really excited for it. So we're going to hop into it, and we're going to see, is this Bait Minotaurs' best creation so far? For all of you passionate gamers, you can now get 20% off all G Fuel products worldwide by using code LINS at checkout. And for any of you motorheads looking for some new drip or apparel, use code MXPR underscore LINS15, fxrracing.eu, to get 15% off. All links and codes are in the description down below. Enjoy the video and drop a cheeky little like and subscribe. Now, I would like to put just a mini disclaimer as we're going to start riding around here. The timing gates, so you know, like the centre line to get your lap time count in. And if I load up the map as well, you'll see this isn't a true to true to track map um the reason for this again is as i was saying this is he's still trying to get the final touches here when this is all fully complete for you guys it will have four separate working layouts so you can ride each and every one of these tracks and time all of your lap times independently um it's gonna be a shop track and i think he said that december the 22nd was going to be the very latest this would be released so basically any time between now and then if you keep your eyes on the store will hopefully uh Get something new and exciting for us all to ride around and i believe that's going to be minotaurs's first ever shop release and i'm really proud of him you know uh, he's been a long-term subscriber supporter like fan of, of the channel overall and i really do appreciate him uh, he's always been very very uh, kind to me and i enjoy his tracks too i think the minotaur compound is probably one of my most played tracks on like the live streams it's really really good fun uh, let me go in first person here we're going to turn off the map so we can concentrate a little bit more. I'm hoping that riding the Fantic on these Supercross tracks doesn't do them too dirty because it, it is a difficult bike to hit big rhythms on. Um, again, if you want to go back and watch uh, yesterday's live stream, see how I done. There was there's quite a big learning curve there, I think. Uh, right, let me see. We're going to go onto the grey portion here. So you can step over, and I'm guessing you go triple on off. Oh, I f I think a 450 might be the move around here. It seems quite quite spread out a little bit so let's let's try and get some laps under our belt let's do a little bit of barking i reckon you can quad into there and then go triple go on off oh my goodness okay so she's she scaled pretty damn big is what i'm noticing straight off the bat so if i am sending stuff i have to absolutely send stuff i can't be like half arse in it and i can't half throttle it I can't try and check up and scrub i need to like fully send which i'm absolutely absolutely okay with i love the sound of this bike not so much in the air but on the ground, I think this bike sounds amazing, like really, really good. And one thing that I found yesterday while riding this, which seems very counterintuitive to do on a two-stroke, is that in my head, I would think, right, on a two-stroke, I'm going to be in a low gear, like higher revs all the time, and that's how you make them move. But I found that if even in like the 180 bowl turns on a supercross track, if I sit in third gear and then bog it around the corner, it's like the amount of speed that you generate from doing that is insane. So there was one rhythm section on the super track last night that if you got the corner perfect, uh, even on a 450, you could quad in. So it was two singles and a little table. So stepping over the table was the fast line. And I couldn't for the life of me get it. I was hitting the corner in, in second gear, hitting it absolutely perfectly. And I couldn't quite get that lift to get the front end cleanly all the way up and over it. 
Uh, so I thought, you know what, let's just let's try the corner in third, see what happens. And it doesn't sound like you're going very fast, but I just generated so much speed in that third gear that I got up and over the quad no problem at all. So very, very strange way of riding these things to make them go fast. Uh, alternatively as, as well, I know that there's a whoop section there that oddly enough I found leaning forward through the whoop section to actually be more beneficial than either staying neutral or leaning back. So very, very weird circumstances. But yeah, I mean, if you're looking for a bike that's just quite quite fun and quite wild to ride, definitely give the Fantic uh, 232 Stroke a, a go. It When you're going fast on it, it feels like you're going fast. Like it feels like it wants to rip your arms off. And I would definitely suggest doing it on a national track rather than Supercross. But I just thought, for the sake of this video, I don't want to keep switching back and forth between uh, like menu switch bikes and tracks. So we're gonna we're gonna run what we've run, and uh, hopefully we can showcase this bike's strengths over on the the two nationals tracks. Let's slam on the brakes around here to the left. Can we triple in. We can triple. I'm just gonna go step over. I didn't quite get a lift to go up and over. That's fine. And then we can double out. Little do, 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 do. very very tame dragons back there. That's nice. You've not got to do too much. We go step on, step off. We triple. Oh, just tagging the back end a little bit. But you know what? I don't mind it. We are we are down on power just a bit. I feel like the 450 would get up and over those rhythms, no problemo. And then this is where I come up to the split part of it. I've gone right every single time so far. So let me try going to the left. We'll try the orange dirt layout. Can we get, is there a little tire tap here for us? Oh, there is. I love me a tire tap. Hell yeah, brother. Oh, weak spot. If if there are any track creators out there and you're looking some inspiration on the best way of getting Linz, Linz to enjoy your tracks, add a sexy tire tap in there. My God, best obstacle in MX bikes, hands down. Absolutely adore them all the time. Uh, the whoop sections on this track, very, very easy. I'm just holding down the right trigger to accelerate through. I'm not having to lean forwards, backwards, like barely any like bike movement at all. Really straightforward and easy. And then I need to give it a little bit more pop, I think, to get up and over that table. But let's step off here, go around the outside, and go on, try and really dab the brake to get that step off. And again, so we're getting through the rhythm, just not as clean as I would like. You have to give quite a lot of manual input for those on-offs there to really lift the bike off, dab the back brake to tip the front end down. All right, let's try again. Do, 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 do. I'm going left now, just like in this tire tap. <laughs> I really like in this tire tap. And go... Oh, I like tire taps when they go well. <laughs> when they don't go well, eh, not so much. I just want to get a clean run. I want to get a clean lap on this track to really do it some justice. So you're up and over this bad boy. You can see through these whoops, I'm just just right trigger. And do it with one hand if I want to. They're really straightforward. It's really, really easy. Which I don't mind. I know um, when it comes to like newer players on this game, that was the cleanest I've got that room so far. Whoops do seem to be the biggest, uh, I guess, like pain point for them them trying to learn go on oh that was so much cleaner i just had to hit it with a lot more speed okay i think i think we can get a clean lap of this so finish line fat scrub lovely hit the berm round to the left another very easy whoop section again just right trigger i haven't got to do anything else i'm gonna go to the left i'm gonna hit the shorter circuit and we get the tight tap don't go over the bars oh close little triple come on this is clean so far. Can the whole lap be clean? Like that, the, the, the way he's built the face of that Supercross triple, it really lets you scrub it nicely. It doesn't give you a horrible kick or anything. And then... Do, 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 Into the left. I'm going to keep it in third gear to get that power. Go triple in. Step over. Triple. Oh, barely. It's all right. This, this is still a very good lap. Proudless so far. Then we've got to try and step onto this with much speed. Step off, dab the brake to get over, triple, double, into the turn. There you go. We've actually done a clean, solid lap. Can't give you like a banker lap in terms of actual lap time for you to go off of. Uh, but you know what? Quite happy with that. Took me a few laps to get, get the hang of it. Now, I don't know which one of these outdoors tracks is which. So we're just going to go over here. I'm going to do one and then I'll do the other in no particular order. Um, I feel like we'll get a good feel out of it after spinning a couple of laps and he's just said that the pro one is meant to be just a little bit more on the rougher side a bit more challenging and then the quote-unquote amateur version i'm going the wrong way let me spin around uh, the amateur version you, you'll feel it's a lot less uh, a lot less rough made for kind of like beginners to the game to practice on which i think is good it's nice that he's taking newbies into consideration as well oh my lord that boots you high if they all do that 
happy man. This is going to be a hell of a lot of fun, especially on this bike. Just need to be careful because the, the front end on this can get very, um, very loosey goosey sometimes. Let's get over these braking bumps, slot into one of these ruts. That absolutely, exactly what I just said. The front end, very loosey goosey. I did struggle in the low speed sections uh, last night riding Supercross on this bike. There's just something about it. it. Doesn't the front end doesn't quite do what you want it to do all the time. But let's try and get a hang of this track. Let's try and learn it. I will say it's quite narrow. It is a skinny track. So if you are racing people online on this, you are going to have to be a little bit wary of others that you don't move over on them. Try and give everyone as much room as possible. Oh my god, this is fast. Oh, oh, I've over jumped it a little bit. Go and keep it alive. Around the outside. That's what the two shows good for. I think I'm just going to have to hit the outsides everywhere just to make this bike sing. Look. Oh my lord. Throwing a fat. Oh. Oh. This this is good. This is very, very good. This is really, really fun. Okay. We've got we've got the rust. We've blown the cobwebs off. Now it's park time. Is that already a lap? Is that... Uh, no, no, no. We've still got one or two jumps. But it's, it's quite a short lap time, actually, looking at it. The track looked quite, uh, quite long when I was previewing it, flying over in the intro. But yeah, I think this leads us to, to where we started. It does. Yeah, this is the jump that we turned around on. So you know what? It, it, do you know what it gives me in terms of like a feel? Which is probably quite weird to say, because in terms of like appearance and like it doesn't look the same at all. But in terms of how it rides and feels and how fast you go and how big the booters are, it gives me James Stewart compound vibes. Like the massive national track on there. Just the way the booters are and how they all flow together and how fast they are. It, it kind of makes me feel like that. Especially this next section that I'm coming up to. So come out of this corner, we hit this double double, round to the right, and then the next section after this right hander, it just goes so quick. It is a big old booter. That, it, it makes it look like that's meant to be like a hip jump round to the right when you're about to take off, but it does go straight. I need to remember that. Like this whole section here, it feels so fast, so flowy. The yar ye up over this bad boy. It's downshift, so I'm going to be in fifth gear there. Up over that. Can we make any of these inside lines work? I don't know, that inside was absolutely fine as well. What about this inside down here? Try and get on the binders. Don't want to go too fast and completely blow the rut. There we go. Can we still get up and over it from the inside? Oh, of course we can. Yeah, that's not that big at all. Lovely stuff. No, this is this is enjoyable. Um, from riding it, um, it feels fairly smooth. Like, there's some roughness to it. Like, it's not completely smooth everywhere. But if this is the roughest of the two, the next one's going to be absolutely rapid. But it would surprise me if this was the... Uh, the pro version it does feel quite easy quite straightforward let's tiptoe around there then there's some sections like that where you are forced to check up you do need to watch your speed a little bit you can't just send it 100 miles an hour absolutely everywhere which some people like some people dislike i, I don't mind us having to check up and having a little bit of technical riding from time to time just means that you can't fully shut your brain off you've got to be thinking about what you're doing on oh, this bikes it sounds good it feels good. I feel like this track is built very nicely for it. Let's go to the outside here. I keep going inside. Rail right around the outside. Ooh, uh, uh, apologies if you hear any noise in the background, by the way. It's uh, it's basically jet wash day for uh, for my parents. They uh, out, out the back jet washing, you know, clearing up the uh, the paths and, and things like that out in the garden. Make sure everything's nice and clean, nice and pristine for the Christmas period so they haven't got to do anything closer to the time. Is anyone else like that? Like your family has to do a complete like deep clean of, of everything before Christmas and before anyone comes round. Just like, it always reminds me. I've seen some like memes online before where it's like uh, how your how your mother thinks that, like visitors are going to react when they enter the house. And it's a video of someone just sprinting upstairs and bursting into this kid's bedroom to inspect everything. And it's like why why has my bedroom got to be perfectly tidy for someone to come and visit? They're not coming into my room. What, what are you on about? But it's, uh, just, I don't know why that's made me think of that, but. It's, it's absolutely fine. Right. Well, I feel like I've only done three or so laps around this track right now, but I think I've I've already basically got it on lock. I feel like I know where I'm going. I feel like I know which lines I want to take. This double up there. Just completely jinx myself. Make a massive mistake as soon as I talk. I think there's a way of hitting that really quickly. Like, you could probably jump into the rut and then fully rail it, and it would be really, really good. Yeah, this whole section here just gives me James Stewart compound vibes too. Big old jump here. I'd say... Maybe you, you, you might not want to ride this track on like a 125, but I think 254 stroke and above anything like that is going to have a lot of fun around here. I think the 254 strokes, you probably wouldn't have to shut off hardly ever at all. It's going to be very, very rapid, um, but I'm, I'm enjoying it on this bike. 
Now, I think I've accidentally chosen a good one here. We get nice and fat, throw some fatties all over the place. Uh, one thing I'm a little bit sad about is... Uh, so, I think I finished set... Well, actually, that's spoilers. I think I... Anyway. I think I finished second overall last night in this uh, Supercross series. But, unfortunately, I can't do round two or round three. Because, you know, it takes place over kind of like the Christmas Eve period. I've got... Uh, the girlfriend coming down to visit and uh, she said she wouldn't mind me doing races while she's here and she'll just happily watch but i just feel a bit awkward about it i feel like you know i've made you travel all the way down to visit and then i'm just making you sit there and watch me play video games it doesn't sit right with me and i know your guys' opinion would be yeah you should totally do it it's fine because greedy selfish um but no i'd feel bad i want to actually spend the time with her although she's very very excited to do a live stream with me so i'm, I'm excited for that as well it should be quite cute you actually finally get to put a face to the name since I seem to talk about her so much recently. And it will be a fun time all the round. I'm planning on doing that either on Christmas Eve or maybe like the 26th, 27th. We'll see how it goes. We'll see um, see what we're up to if we have any plans. Uh, but this, I think this will do it for this track right here. I'm going to go and try and find my way over to the other one. And then I suppose this will be a test actually to see which one of these tracks was the, the amateur one and which one is the pro one. Right. Track number three slash four. I realise I <clears throat> that sends you very high. I realise I kind of combined the two supercross tracks into one, but it's it's fine. It's not the end of the world. Right, let's go up and over this bad boy. This one already feels like a little bit slower in terms of the speed. The jumps aren't all massive booters like the other one was, but we're not. That's not meant to be a negative thing by any means. I really like what he's done with the jump faces on this track. I'm not sure what he's done different to his normal ones, but they just seem to give you like that that good kick to get you up in the air. So it's like you actually go up rather than just like forward. So you have time to do some some big old whipper tails. So this one does have some roughness to it. Let me just slow down a little bit so I can work out where I'm going. I'll jump down this hill. Rail this round to the right. Where's this go? Round to the right again. Double round the corner. I reckon you could double all the way around that too. I'm going to send this. I can't promise how... It's, okay, it's not as big as I thought. And then quite a rough, bumpy straight through here. I'm going to get on the brakes. I feel like this turns. Doesn't turn. Okay. Turns now. I can see the corner straight after it. So I would say... Oh, this is actually a tough one. I don't know which one's which. Because this one's a bit more technical in terms of you need to kind of gauge your speed a bit better. Because you can't like fully send all the jumps like you could on the other track. But then the roughness is quite rough in some bit. I think I can step onto that table. But... Edit. Cut. Right now. Right. Let's see if that's doable then. I need to downside this jump nicely. That's the key. Oh, perfect. Can't do it from the left. We'll try it from the right. I think the right has a little bit more of a kick to it. Right, here we go. Yo, yeet. Get her! Yes! Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's doable. There's one very, very specific point there. Kind of middle to the right ever so slightly to hit a big boy line. I'm not sure if that's intentional or if that's just like a breaking bump on the face that's managed to give me a, the opposite effect and kick me further. Um, but there you go. Minotaurs, if you're working that, you're welcome for the testing. I'm not sure if that's broken or confirmed what you wanted it to do, but I'd say leave it in. You know, I don't don't like smooth it out so you can't send it anymore or add, add an invisible wall there to stop you. It's fun. It's risk versus reward. I barely made it after downsiding the jumps absolutely perfectly before. Uh, and I'm here for it. I, I love finding little lines like that and just kind of... It's, it's, it's those like little skill separators and how you read tracks. Because if you hit that on the far left and the far right, even if you hit it in, right in the middle, you're not getting it. There's one very, very specific area slash bump that you need to hit there to give you the lift to get up and over. So I'm all for that. Like really, really good. Intentional or not, I'm a big, big fan. So let's just spin one or two more laps around here. I'm, I'm actually struggling on this track a little bit more. I think... It's because some of the jumps are like a bit more blind than the others. Uh, so on that track over there on the left, a lot of the jumps were like this, where you can see where the landing is. They're more step ups, whereas these you're kind of cresting the hills and then stepping down. So it just takes a little bit longer to get used to. I still genuinely I couldn't tell you which track was pro and which one was amateur. I feel like they're both of uh, a similar difficulty, but for different reasons. You know, the first one's a bit difficult just because you're carrying so much speed everywhere. You want to try and go as fast as possible. Uh, this one's more difficult because you actually have to check up and take your time. I think I've crashed in that outside like three laps in a row now. Am I just trying to go too fast or is it a bike issue? That's You just need to stand up. 
I, I'm actually so I'm such an idiot, man. Yeah, I've got a training session today when I finish recording this as well. And how am I meant to sit there and train someone when I can't even go around a simple 180 left without crashing three times in a row? And it takes me the fourth attempt to be like, what am I doing here? Let me adjust this and change it slightly. I don't know. I don't know. Also, if you want any coaching, by the way, feel free. I'm happy to coach with in Supercross too. I think Supercross is so much easier to coach than outdoors. I think outdoors it's very difficult to like pick apart what people are doing, but in Supercross, where I consider myself a bit better than I am at outdoors, I really enjoy it. Like, it's, it's fun teaching people techniques that I've kind of found after a long time. Um, so if, if you want any sort of one-on-one -on -one coaching, then in the description there should be a one-on-one -on -one coaching link that will take you to the MXB Coach website and you can have a little scroll through there. Should we try and send it one more time for the fans? Yeah, go on then. Oh, it's too far left. I've ended my distance. Okay, that's fine. Um, I might end it there, actually. But good stuff. I do generally think this could be Minotaur's best one yet. And it's, I think this is biggest like compound overall. I don't think he's done anything yet that has like four tracks in one. I know he's been working on this for quite a long time. And don't don't take this as like a final product. This is more of a, an early showcase. So as I said at the start, it should be hopefully released by the 22nd at the very, very latest. It could well be before then. Uh, so keep your eyes peeled for this one. Definitely fun. Definitely flowy. Definitely a good two-stroke track. I'm, I'm glad I picked this bike for it. And uh, I think that'll do it from me. I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you could, just drop a like and subscribe to the channel if you're new. I'd really, really appreciate it. And I hope the holidays are treating you well. I hope you have a lovely rest of the day. What you're up to. And I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace.